by Peyton Craft. And Golden State Warriors select Draymond With the 60th pick, the Sacramento Kings select Isaiah Thomas. The seventh pick, the Toronto Raptors select Pascal Siakam. With the 41st pick, the Denver Nuggets select Nikola Jokic. So yeah, we're basically looking at every team's best late first round draft pick or second round draft pick since 2010. If you guys do enjoy these videos, I would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring today's video. More about them later. Also some criteria before we head into this. So if a team traded for the player technically, like Dallas technically traded for Luka Doncic, that player would fall under the team that traded for them, not the team that they wore the cap on on draft night. And then I'm also not doing undrafted players as well, only players that were physically drafted in the top 60 picks. So let's get into this. So we're gonna start things off with the Los Angeles Lakers who have been a phenomenal drafting team since basically 2015. There's multiple late first round picks or second round picks that you could mention in this video, like Josh Hart from 2017, Jordan Clarkson, who went in the second round in 2014, draft night trades. I'm going to talk about Kyle Kuzma, who they acquired with the 27th pick in the 2017 NBA draft. Kuzma was an upperclassman coming out of Utah. He didn't really have much pedigree coming into that 2017 draft. He was looked at to be a fringe first rounder, but it was going to be no surprise if he went in the second round. Lakers took a chance on him late in the 20s. This was involved in the D'Angelo Russell, Brooke Lopez, Timothy Mozgov trade. And since the Lakers already got Lonzo Ball in this draft, they needed to unvote D'Angelo Russell. So Kuzma spent four years in LA before being traded for Russell Westbrook in the 2021 offseason. But he was a main contributor to the Lakers 2020 championship in the bubble. We're going to go all the way back to 2010 to talk about the LA Clippers acquiring Eric Bledsoe on draft night with the 18th overall pick. So Bledsoe just played three years with the Clippers, averaging 6.7 points as a rookie, 3.3 points as a sophomore, eight and a half points in his third year in the league, but was a main headliner piece in acquiring JJ Redick and Jared Dudley. The Clippers didn't really need Eric Bledsoe anymore since they got Chris Paul around the time he was drafted, but Eric Bledsoe turned into a very good player in the NBA, playing around 10 years in the league, averaging 13.7 points and 4.7 assists. Also wanted to give a shout out to Terrence Mann, who they took in the second round in the 2019 draft. This is one of the best draft picks of all time for a team that was notoriously bad for drafting in the 2010s. And this is going to be Isaiah Thomas going last in the 2011 NBA draft. Yes, Mr. Irrelevant. So the Kings took a 5'9 point guard out of Washington, Isaiah Thomas, who finished seventh in rookie of the year voting in his rookie season, averaging 11 and a half points and 4.1 assists. He then averaged 13.9 points as a sophomore and then finished 10th in most improved voting in year three, where he averaged 20 points, 6.3 assists, and shot 45% from the field and 35% from three. After year three, Thomas was then traded to the Phoenix Suns for Alex Oriaki in a trade exception. Yeah, great job there, Sacramento. He spent a couple years in Phoenix before getting traded to the Boston Celtics during the 2015 trade deadline, and the rest was history for Thomas in Boston, where he finished fifth in MVP voting in 2017, and him getting drafted last in the 2011 draft is one of the most impressive draft picks of all time. But one of the best second round draft picks of all time is going to come in here for the Golden State Warriors, and they selected Draymond Green 35th overall in the 2012 NBA draft. Draymond is still with the Warriors today in year number 12 with Golden State, where he's won four NBA championships. He's been on an all-defensive team eight different times. He's a four-time All-Star, 2017 Defensive Player of the Year winner. He's been on an All-NBA two different times as well. And from 2015 to 2018 was one of the most insane two-way peaks for a point forward in this league, where Draymond averaged 12 points, six and a half assists, eight and a half rebounds, a steal and a half a night, a block and a half a night, shot 45% from the field, 33% from three. And honestly, is one of those players that will never show up in the box score how important he is to a team because he is that guy for Golden State and is going to get their jersey retired by them one day. Okay, I'm completely cheating here for the Phoenix Suns because they do not have one single good pick outside of the lottery since 2010. Though I'm going to talk about TJ Warren who went 14th overall, the last pick of the lottery in the 2014 draft. I mean, the team technically drafted Bogdan Bogdanovich in the 2014 draft as well, 27th overall, but traded him on draft night to Sacramento. So going back to Warren, where Warren ended up spending six years in Phoenix, averaging 13.8 points, 4.1 rebounds, and shot almost 50% from the field. He did have a year in 2018 where he averaged just under 20 points per game and was phenomenal for the Pacers in 2020 after getting traded to them. And he was also a beast in the bubble. You could also cheat as well and say this could be Mikel Bridges, who they traded Zaire Smith, who went 16th overall for the 10th overall pick player in Mikel Bridges. But yeah, the Suns weren't a great drafting team outside of Devin Booker in the 2010s. For the Milwaukee Bucks, we're going to talk about somebody that won Rookie of the Year from his draft class, and that is going to be Malcolm Brogdon, who was the third 
36th overall pick in the 2016 draft. Brogdon was a slower guard, but more defensive minded out of Virginia, who are notoriously known for a slower style of play in college basketball. And then Brogdon ended up spending three years in Milwaukee, averaging 12.8 points, three and a half assists, three and a half rebounds. Like I said, won the 2017 Rookie of the Year award and then was traded to the Pacers in the 2019 offseason and basically broke out for them, averaging 16 and a half points and seven assists in year one in Indiana and then 21 points, six assists in year two. He was also the Sixth Man of the Year award winner in 2023 with the Boston Celtics. So next up, we're gonna talk about somebody that has spent most of his career with the Milwaukee Bucks but was drafted by the Detroit Pistons, 39th overall in the 2012 draft and that's gonna be Chris Middleton. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Middleton was drafted by the Detroit Pistons. He did play his rookie season with them in 2013 in just 27 games and then was traded in the 2013 offseason with Brandon Knight for Brandon Jennings, a phenomenal trade by the Milwaukee Bucks. And then over the next 11 seasons, Middleton in Milwaukee has averaged 17 and a half points, five rebounds, four assists a night, shooting 46% from the field, 39% from three, and was a top player on their 2021 championship team. He's a three-time All-Star and is one of the best and most underrated second round picks of all time. Going over to Chicago, we're going to talk about somebody that was the last overall pick in the first round of the 2011 NBA draft, and that's going to be Jimmy Butler. So yeah, the 2011 NBA draft had phenomenal picks at the last spot of each round. Isaiah Thomas in the second round, Jimmy Butler in the first round. It took a little bit of time for Jimmy Butler to get acclimated to the NBA level from Marquette. He played 42 games in his rookie year in 2012, averaging just two and a half points. Then in year two, he played all 82 games, averaging eight and a half points. Was on all defensive second team in year three in 2014. Then in 2015, he averaged 38 and a half minutes a night, which led the NBA. Averaged 20 points, six rebounds, three and a half assists, and 1.8 steals and one most improved player. He then was basically an all-star every year for the next few seasons, did get traded to Minnesota in the 2017 offseason, then got traded to Philadelphia in the beginning of the 2019 regular season, then has led Miami to two NBA Finals appearances, once in 2020 and once in 2023, and has turned himself into a Hall of Fame player. The Indiana Pacers, we're gonna go all the way back to 2010 for this one, the 40th overall pick in this draft, and that's gonna be Lance Stevenson. Yeah, remember Lance? Well, Lance played four years in Indiana to start off his career. He finished second in most improved vote in 2014 where he averaged 13.8 points 7.2 rebounds and 4.6 assists he was a vital part to the Pacers really good teams that pushed the Miami Heatles to the test in the early 2010s he was always known for being a good defender he did bounce around to a ton of teams after Indiana playing for Charlotte the Clippers the Grizzlies the Pelicans the Timberwolves back to the Pacers then with the Lakers went to China then played for the Hawks and then the Pacers again in 2022 but somebody that played 10 years in the NBA as a second round pick is a damn good feat the Cleveland Cavaliers selected an absolute sharpshooter out of Virginia with the 33rd pick in 2014. And his name was Joe Harris. So that's the second Virginia Cavalier to be mentioned in this video draft in the second round. First with Malcolm Brogdon, now with Joe Harris, who did pretty much nothing in Cleveland in his first two years, averaging 2.7 points as a rookie, then 0.6 points in five games as a sophomore as a 24-year-old. And usually you would think his career could be over. In 2016, he was traded by the Cavs with cash considerations and a 2017 second round draft pick to the Magic for a 2020 second round pick. Then he was immediately waived by Orlando. But then the 2016 offseason, he signed a contract with the Brooklyn Nets and he never looked back, averaging 8.2 points and shooting 38% from three in 2017, 10.8 points, shooting 41% in year two with Brooklyn. And then this is when he really took off 13.7 points, shooting 47% from three in 2019. 14 and a half points shooting 42% in 2020, and then 14.1 points shooting 47% from three again in 2021. And there was a stretch where Joe Harris was a top five three point shooter in the NBA. Minnesota selected a really good point guard with the 24th overall pick in the 2015 NBA draft out of Duke, and his name is Tyus Jones. Jones was always kind of a backup in Minnesota in his time in Memphis. He finished 11th and sixth man of the year voting in 2022, and then sixth and sixth man of the year voting last year in 2023, averaging 10 points and five assists for the Memphis Grizzlies. And he started 22 games for them too, with John Morant being suspended. And then this year, he's been phenomenal for the Washington Wizards as a 27-year-old, averaging 12 points, seven and a half assists, and he rarely turns the ball over as well, averaging less than one turnover a night. And he's shooting 49% from the field and 42% from three. He's going to get a bag this offseason. All right, next up for the Denver Nuggets. Obviously, he is the best second round pick of all time. The 41st pick in the 2014 NBA draft. He was drafted during a Taco Bell commercial and his name 
is Nikola Jokic. What's there not to say about Jokic, man? He finished third in Rookie of the Year voting in 2016, second in Most Improved voting in 2017, fourth in MVP voting in 2019, ninth in MVP voting in 2020, and then won back-to-back -back MVPs in 2022 and 2021. He finished runner-up in MVP voting last year. He could win MVP again this year. He's the reigning finals champion. He's a six-time All-Star, five-time All-NBA member. And over the last four years in the NBA, he's averaging 26 points, 12 rebounds, 8.8 assists, 1.3 seals and shooting 59% from the field and 36% from three. Truly video game numbers. I don't think it's talked about how Portland took Anthony Simons 24th overall in the 2018 NBA draft. Like that's a phenomenal pick by them. Simons averaged 3.8 points as a rookie, obviously behind Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, 8.3 points as a sophomore, and then in year three, 7.8 points. But he broke out in year four in 2022, where he averaged 17.3 points. 2023 season averaged 21.1 points and this year 22.6 points for the Portland Trailblazers. And he's still just 24 years old and is a great building block as the Portland Trailblazers enter a rebuild after trading Damian Lillard in the 2023 offseason. Shout out to the Utah Jazz acquiring the 27th overall pick during the 2013 NBA draft to select Rudy Gobert, who is well on his way to being a Hall of Fame player. This is Gobert's 11th year in the NBA, nine with Utah, now his second with Minnesota. He's won three Defensive Player of the Year awards and is on his way to picking up his fourth. He's a three-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA member, six-time All-Defensive member, and with the international accolades as well, Rudy Gobert Bear is going to be a Hall of Fame pick with the 27th overall selection in the 2013 NBA draft. We're going to go back to 2011 for the OKC Thunder and talk about Reggie Jackson, who they took 24th overall out of Boston College. Jackson was a mere rotational guy for his first two years in the NBA, averaging 3.1 points as a rookie and then 5.3 points as a sophomore. And then in a more expanded role in 2014 was fantastic for the Thunder, averaging 13 points, 4.1 assists, 3.9 rebounds, and started in 36 out of his 80 games played. Then he was traded to Detroit in the 2015 season and was a really good starting point guard for the Detroit Pistons. In his six years there, he averaged 16.2 points and 5.6 assists and is still playing great rotational minutes in 2024 for the Denver Nuggets and won a title with them last year in 2023. The Charlotte Hornets haven't had really any fantastic late first rounders or second round picks since 2010. So we're going to talk about Mark Williams, who was the 15th overall pick in the 2022 draft. This is just Williams' second year in the NBA, but he's really improved from basically the first half of his rookie year to what he's doing right now in 2024. He's had an injury injury riddled sophomore season, but he's averaging 13 points, nine and a half rebounds, shooting 65% from the field, and looks like a real building block for the Charlotte Hornets long-term at the center spot. For the Miami Heat, we're going to talk about Josh Richardson, who was the 40th overall pick in the 2015 draft out of Tennessee. Richardson shot 46% from three as a rookie in 2016. Then he went up to 10 points per game from 6.6 .6 in year two, proved mightily in year three as a great 3D piece, was phenomenal in year four, averaging 16 and a half points, 4.1 assists and 3.6 rebounds for the 2019 Miami Heat. That was definitely the best season of his career. Then he got traded to Philadelphia in a Jimmy Butler signing trade in the 2019 offseason. Then in 2020, he was traded to Dallas for Seth Curry. And he has been traded a bunch in his career, playing for six different teams. Also the San Antonio Spurs, Boston Celtics, and the New Orleans Pelicans. But somebody that's going to have a long career in the NBA is the 40th overall pick. Makes it a fantastic selection by the Miami Heat in 2015. I'm going with Dennis Schroeder for the Atlanta Hawks, who they took 17th overall in 2013. You could also mention John Collins in 2017, but the 2013 draft was a lot weaker than 2017, which makes this pick a little bit more impressive in my opinion. Atlanta took Schroeder out of Germany and was immediately the backup point guard behind Jeff Teague. He finished ninth in six man of the year voting in 2016, averaging 11 points and four and a half assists. And then when he became a starter in 2017 after Jeff Teague left, he finished 12th in most improved player voting. He averaged 18 points, six and a half assists, and shot 45% from the field. Was a starter that year and the following in Atlanta. Finished top 10 in Sixth Man of the Year voting in 2019 for the OKC Thunder, and then second in 2020 when he backed up Chris Paul for the Thunder. Then he spent some time in LA, Boston, Houston, back with the Lakers, then with the Raptors, now with the Brooklyn Nets. And outside of his rookie year, Schroeder has never averaged under 10 points per game in any year of his career, and he's still just 30 years old. So the Washington Wizards have not had many good picks outside of the lottery since 2010. So I'm going to talk about Thomas Sadoransky, who was the 32nd overall pick in the 2012 draft. He didn't come over till the NBA till the 2017 season where he averaged 2.7 points for Washington, but then he finished 12th and 6th man of the year voting in year number two in 2018, averaging 
points and four assists, and then was a good starting or bench point guard for the next couple of years in the NBA for Washington, Chicago, New Orleans, San Antonio, and then Washington in 2022. Not a great career by any means, but you know what? A solid one for somebody going in the second round. And then for the Orlando Magic, not a lot of great late first rounders or second round picks either. So we're going to talk about the 15th overall pick from the 2020 NBA draft. Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony did just get a contract extension from the Orlando Magic this previous offseason, so he's going to be here for a little bit. Over his four years in the NBA, he's averaged 13.7 points, 4.7 rebounds, and 4.2 assists, and is one of the better backup point guards in the NBA in 2024. Before we get back into the video, I want to give a word from today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is by far the easiest way to play fantasy sports. If I'm either going to a game, watching a game with friends, or maybe it's just a random night that I want to make the game that I'm watching a little bit more interesting, I will use Underdog Fantasy. And my favorite part about Underdog Fantasy is their pick'em game. So you go to the pick'em tab basically on the Underdog website or app, and you pick whether players will have a higher or lower stat total in that game for a chance to win big. You can pick between two to five players players in your pick'em entry, and you can win up to 20 times your money on a single game if you get all your picks right. Also, another amazing thing that Underdog Fantasy does for you, new customers that use my link in the description, is you can get the new customer special. So basically, it could be somebody like Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, or Nikola Jokic, and you just have to say that they're going to get higher than 0.5 points on the night that they're playing. New customers also will get a 100% deposit match up to $100 with my link in the description and use code SROS, that's S-R-O-S. That's 100% deposit match up to $100. That's a no-brainer. Use my code SROSS and please, like always, remember to play responsibly. And thank you to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring today's video. For the Dallas Mavericks, we are going to go to the 33rd overall pick in the 2018 draft. Somebody that was an all-star this season, but not for the Dallas Mavericks. And that is going to be Jalen Brunson. The Dallas took a chance on one of the best college players in the NBA. He fell to the second round out of Nova, averaged 9.3 points as a rookie for the Mavericks, and he started in 38 games. Year two, his numbers kind of dipped down a little bit, but then was fantastic for them in year three, finishing fourth and sixth man of the year voting. He was great in his last year in Dallas in 2022, averaging 16 points and five assists. Was great for them in the playoffs when Luka was out. And then signed with the New York Knicks in the 2022 offseason, finishing 12th in MVP voting, third in most improved voting, averaging 24 points, six assists, and shot 49% from the field and 41% from three. And he's been even better this year in 2024, where he's been an all-star, averaging 27.7 points, 6.7 assists, and shooting 48% percent from the field. So for the San Antonio Spurs, we could talk about Kawhi Leonard, who was the 15th overall pick in 2011. I talked about him in the best draft pick video. So you could obviously mention him here. I'm going to talk about two players that the Spurs took in back-to-back -back years with the 29th overall pick. Starting in 2016, they took DeJounte Murray 29th overall. He averaged 3.4 points as a rookie. 8.1 points as a sophomore, but was named to all defensive second team, missed all of year three, but then got better and better. 10.9 points in year four, 15.7 points in year five, and then was an all-star in his last year in San Antonio in the 2022 season, got traded for multiple first round picks to the Hawks in the 2022 offseason, where he's averaged 21 points and six assists in his two years in Atlanta. Because one year later in 2017, San Antonio took Derek White with the same pick, number 29 overall. White averaged 3.2 points in his rookie year, 9.9 .9 points in his sophomore year, and then has an average under 10 points since. He was on all defensive second team in his second year in Boston in 2023, and we all know him to be one of the best role players. Now just a really good player overall in 2024. Definitely a top 60, 70 player in the league, which is great value for somebody that went with the second to last pick in the first round in 2017. Shout out to the Houston Rockets selecting Clint Capello with the 25th overall pick in 2014. Capello played in 12 games his rookie year, just averaging 2.7 points, but as they got more familiar, comfortable, and build up a great relationship with point guard James Harden. He really developed to being a great rim running, lob catching, and defensive minded center first time in Houston. He averaged 12.6 points in 2017, 13.9 in 2018, and then 16 and a half points in 2019. Got traded to Atlanta in February of 2020. Then his first year with Trey Young averaged 15.2 points in 2021 and finished sixth in defensive player of the year voting and led the league in rebounds. With the last pick in the first round in the 2020 draft, Memphis took Desmond Bain out of TCU, and it's been a phenomenal selection. Bain averaged 9.2 points in his rookie season, but he shot 43% from three. In year number two, in 2022, he averaged 18.2 points, 4.4 rebounds, shot 44% from three, and finished fifth 
in the NBA most improved player voting. 2023 in 58 games, he averaged 21 and a half points. And then this year, 2024, he's averaging 24 and a half points, five and a half assists, and four and a half rebounds. Got an extension from Memphis last offseason, and it's going to be a huge staple of this Memphis Grizzlies future. We're going to talk about the 35th overall pick in the 2021 draft now, when the New Orleans Pelicans selected Herbert Jones out of Alabama. Herb Jones was definitely a fringe first rounder going into the 2021 draft. He fell to the second round, and New Orleans made a phenomenal selection. He finished sixth in rookie of the year voting in 2022, averaging nine and a half points, 3.8 rebounds, and shot 47% from the field. In year two, he averaged 9.8 points and 4.1 rebounds. And this year, in year three, he's averaging 11 and a half points, three and a half rebounds, a steal and a half a night for the third straight year, and is shooting 43% from three, 51% from the field, and is one of the best wing defenders in all of basketball. The defensive advanced metrics really show how impactful he is to this Pelicans team. It's either DPM, BPM, Darko, any specific specific defensive statistic is going to love Herb Jones on that side of the floor. Toronto took a chance on a big man out of New Mexico State in the 2016 NBA draft with the 27th overall pick, and his name was Pascal Siakam. Siakam was extremely raw as a prospect coming to the NBA. As a 22-year-old, he averaged 4.2 points as a rookie, which is kind of crazy because if you're averaging 4.2 points as a 22-year-old, your future is not looking too bright. But then 7.3 points in year two, and then one most improved player in 2019, averaging 17 points and seven rebounds, and was a vital part to their championship roster that season. He finished 10th in MVP voting the year later after Kawhi Leonard left, averaging 23 points and seven rebounds. Spent three more years in Toronto before getting traded to the Indiana Pacers this season in 2024. For the Brooklyn Nets, you could talk about Bojan Bogdanovic, who they've taken in the second round, but I'm gonna talk about Nick Claxton, who was the 31st overall pick the first pick in the second round in the 2019 draft. Foxen was a very raw big man coming out of Georgia. He averaged 4.4 points and 2.9 rebounds in his rookie year, playing in just 15 games. Year two, he played 32 games. Year three, he played 47 games, but started 19 of them, taking that starting center spot from DeAndre Jordan. And over the last two years, Claxton has been great for Brooklyn. He finished ninth in defensive player of the year voting in 2023, led the league in field goal percentage, averaging 12 and a half points, nine rebounds and two and a half blocks a night. He's replicating those numbers this year as he's about to be an unrestricted free agent in this upcoming free agency class in 2024 and is going to definitely get paid a six-figure contract. Boston has been a fantastic drafting team inside the lottery, getting guys like Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum since 2010. They don't have too many great picks outside of the lottery, so I'm going to talk about Terry Rozier, who was the 16th overall pick in 2015. Rozier averaged 1.8 points as a rookie coming out of Louisville in 39 games for the Celtics, shooting 27% from the field and 22% from three in 2016. In year three, he finished 10th in most improved player voting, averaging 11 and a half points, but still shooting under 40% from the field. In his four years in Boston, never shot above 40% from the field, but his first year in Charlotte in 2020, averaged 18 points, four assists, four and a half rebounds, and shot 40% from three, 42% from the field. He averaged 20 points in his second year in Charlotte in 2021 and hovered around that number for the next two years before getting traded to the Miami Heat this year in 2024. The Knicks have had some nice late first round picks since 2010, getting guys like Iman Shumpert, Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, but I'm going to talk about Tim Hardaway Jr., who they took with the 24th overall pick in the 2013 draft. This is Tim Hardaway Jr.'s 11th year in the NBA, and he's been a consistent scorer basically since he got drafted. He averaged 10 points as a rookie, 11 and a half points in year two, then got traded to Atlanta in the 2015 offseason during the draft averaged six and a half points that year. With that massive step back, people thought his career could be in doubt. But then one year later, he finished 10th and 6th man of the year voting, 9th and most improved voting, averaging 14 and a half points and shooting 45% from the field. Then ended up back in New York and then was in the Kristaps Porzingis trade to Dallas in the 2019 season and has been a consistent scoring wing for them. Either it's been in the starting lineup or off the bench. And the last player we're going to mention in this video is the 39th overall pick from the 2014 draft when the Philadelphia 76ers selected Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant was part of the early trust the process the Sixers teams. He played two and a half years in Philadelphia before getting traded to the OKC Thunder for Ursan Ilyasova and a first round pick that ended up being Tyrese Maxey. He was fine in OKC and then ended up in Denver for one year in 2020, averaging 12 points. Then he signed a $60 million contract with the Pistons in the 2020 offseason, where he finished second in most improved voting in 2021, averaging 22 points and four and a half rebounds, and has hovered around those numbers over the last four years, spending those two in Detroit and then the last two seasons in Portland. So hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you you all for watching drop a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video let me know what you thought of my selections in the comments below make sure you take a look at my other links as well in the description my twitter instagram and tiktok and follow my podcast as well thank you all for watching i love you guys and i'll catch you on the next one peace